So you have a Canon 90D or a similar camera and you want to use it as a webcam. I'm currently using it as a webcam to record this video, so it will look a little bit like this once you have it set up. However, there are two different options you can use. First, you can use the micro USB connected to your computer and use it sort of as just a very simple webcam uh, using the capture utility software provided by Canon. Now there are a few issues with that and I will go into that in just a minute here, but that is an option. You won't get the full 1080p, it won't look exactly like this, but it'll still look pretty good and can work in a pinch. But if you want to get a picture quality that looks really good, higher frame rate, just really more consistent, you will have to use what's called a capture card. I'm currently using the Elgato Cam Link and it works very well. I'm very impressed with it. Runs about $100, so you have a couple different options. You also may want to get a dummy battery, which will run you around $130 for the official Canon one. And I'll talk about that in just a minute here, but first let's talk about using it as a webcam using the micro USB. So this is what it looks like using the EOS webcam capture utility thing, whatever it's called. And it looks really good. Uh, I was very surprised when I just booted this up because I remember it looking a lot worse. I don't know if they've improved it since it released or what, but it looks very solid. Like the picture looks incredible. And that is surprising because it's not 1080p. It's not even 1280 by 720. This is not HD, despite it looking really good. It's like a weird, it was like 1024 by 686, six, I don't know. It was a weird thing I didn't recognize, but it looks really good but there are a few issues. There are some weird bugs. For example, you cannot run the EOS like regular um, software that comes with the camera where when you plug it in, you have to like exit out of that for this to run, which isn't the biggest issue. It just doesn't really make sense to me uh, because you're probably gonna have that software already installed, but uh, I can't use that. Also, the frame rate isn't amazing as you can see. I mean, it doesn't look like blurry at all like if you could see the movements my hands movements like they look good it's just a little choppy so for example i'm going to switch over to the logitech brio which is a 4k webcam i think it's in 1080 right now um that's all i'm outputting right now but i'm switching over to a much higher resolution uh webcam right now and it looks worse which is kind of right, at least in my opinion. Uh, I could probably change a couple of the settings to make it look a little bit better, um, but I already played with it a little bit. Uh, and as you can see, when I move around, it looks blurry rather than choppy. So it's like smooth, but it's blurry in that aspect. So um, I don't know. I, I guess I prefer the kind of choppiness a little bit. But I guess if you're playing something that has like a really high FPS game, if you're streaming or something, it'll look a little weird. Another issue I had is whenever I tried to change the settings, the whole thing would just crash. I don't know if that's a Streamlabs problem or the camera, but it's a little buggy. I will say that. And it's not perfect, but I mean, in a pinch, this worked. So for example, if you have this camera or a similar camera just kind of lying around, like you use it for photography and video, and you're like, hey, maybe I can use it as a webcam. This is a free option, uh, but if you are getting this camera specifically for like recording stuff, having a really high quality stream, uh, you're not using it to its full advantage. And I'm gonna talk about how you can do that. And we're gonna switch right over to that picture so you can see the difference. And this is what it looks like with my current setup. And here's some movement so you can see it's a lot more smooth way less choppy than before. It probably looks a lot better because this is 1080p coming out of it rather than the 1000 whatever that was coming out of it before. However, it's a little bit more work and you will have to buy a few things. So the first thing you're gonna need is some type of capture card. Now, instead of going through the micro USB on the camera, you're gonna be going through the mini HDMI. That's gonna go to the capture card. The capture card will send that to the computer. So. I use the Elgato Cam Link, which runs for about $100 or so. A little expensive, I know, for something that just is connecting the camera to the computer, which you can do for free, but you will get a lot better picture quality, a lot better frame rate, and if you're using such an expensive camera already, you might as well shell out for a little bit more. However, there are a few other cheaper options. For example, there is this just like no name capture card that showed up a year or so ago that randomly does a pretty good job. 
uh, and they're only like $10 on Amazon, 10, 20 bucks, which is like way, way less than the Elgato products. However, there are, I think, some frame rate issues. I think they run a little hot. Um, they may just die out on you. You probably have less support if something were to go wrong. So, I mean, for 10 bucks, you might as well try if you're not sure if you're going to want the Elgato capture card. You might as well start off with something cheap. Or what you could do is just buy the Elgato capture card. You can buy the very cheap capture card and then just try them both out. See which one you think is better for you. So if you're completely content with the cheap capture card, you can just go with that. Uh, there probably are a few options in the middle. I talked about the Genki Shadowcast, which I have used with the camera before, I believe. Uh, and it was pretty good. It did the job pretty well. Uh, but I like the Elgato capture card. And if you're using a really expensive camera, you might as well just go with the best. There probably are some like more expensive options, but I think the Elgato capture card is just the gold standard. It's all you need. Now you're going to want the clean HDMI out. I'm going to show you how you can do that in the settings real quick. You're going to want to turn on clean HDMI output to remove all the settings that display on the flip out screen. So go into settings, go to shoot three, and at the bottom there is the HDMI info display. Click that and then select either clean 4K output or clean full HD output, which is 1080p. So when you do that, you should have an output that looks like this with no menu settings anywhere. Now the camera will still have the settings on them. Like I can see them right now on the camera settings themselves. However, the output does not show those, which is what you want. So the other thing I would recommend is basically a dummy battery. And what that is, is a battery that goes into your camera that it thinks is a regular battery, but it's actually plugged into the wall. And then you can use that without having to worry about your battery life. Because once recording and using as a webcam, you're probably going to get less than an hour of webcam out of this. Now, you could just have two batteries and you're charging them and swapping them out, but that's not really ideal. It's pretty inconvenient, uh, especially during a stream. Like if you're playing a video game or something, you don't want to just say, oh, hold on, my battery's low. Let me pause for five minutes, come back. And you don't want to be doing that. So you will probably want this and you will need the AC adapter and the DC coupler. That's the dummy battery, but you'll also need the AC adapter for it. So you can actually plug in to the wall and stuff, which is a little expensive. You will want the Canon ones for this. There are probably third party options, but I really wouldn't feel safe recommending them to you, even if it is pretty safe and there are good reviews for it. If anything were to go wrong, uh, I believe it would void your warranty with your camera. So I would recommend getting the official Canon one. Uh, I will link them both in the description, the AC adapter and the DC coupler. It should run you somewhere around $130, which I know is a lot of money. I didn't enjoy spending that much, but I've been using it for a year and a half. I've had no issues with the dummy battery. The only problem I had was like physically plugging it in. It felt a little weird, but once I got it in, I haven't really touched it since. It's just kind of been plugged in and I've had no issues since then. So once you have all of those things set up, you should have an output that looks something like this. Uh, should be very high quality and it shouldn't have any FPS issues unlike the uh, EOS webcam utility software. It should look very good. You can use it in Zoom, OBS, anything you use to use a webcam for basically. And it should look very good. I mean, it's a very expensive camera, so obviously it should have a pretty good output. But really to utilize it to its fullest potential, you will need to buy a couple hundred dollars worth of stuff. Uh, also having some good lighting helps without the lighting it doesn't look nearly as good but yeah I've been using this camera for about a year and a half now I absolutely love how it looks and really it was inconvenient for me to record something plug that in send it to the computer edit it and just keep doing that whole process but being able to use it as a webcam and have it look basically the same as if I were just recording something is something that is huge to me just for the convenience aspect alone so yeah, you will probably have to spend a little bit of money for this and have a few things set up. But for the convenience aspect alone, it's just been incredible for me. So thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe to see more videos like these. I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers so you can help me get there. I would really appreciate it. Make sure to leave a like on the video. Comment if you have any issues. I had a lot of issues setting it up when I first started. So I, I've definitely been there. If you have any problems, please let me know. I'll try my best to help you out. Thank you again for watching. Peace.